And wanting to lose a proton means that you would be stable being like a minus. Like that that, yes. that atom would... That's right. Generally, if you lose a proton, you end up with more negative charge. So the people that are willing to lose a positive charge are the people that can stabilize that negative charge. That's the idea from general chemistry. Something is a strong acid if it has a very stable conjugate base. Something's a strong acid if it has a stable well, conjugate well, base. When, it when like NH3 deprotonates, right. it becomes NH2, which isn't a negative charge. That's true. So there are some acids that already have a positive charge. And that explains why this is a pretty good acid. Why is this a pretty good acid? So because when it loses the proton, it's a nice, stable, neutral molecule. That's why, in general, if things have po almost anything with a positive charge is a good acid. Uh -huh. Almost anything with a positive charge is a good acid because it wants to get rid of that positive charge by donating a proton. There's only a few things that are neutral that are good acids. It's harder to find something neutral that's a good acid than something with a positive charge. So when we say when it leaves and its state, when when it leaves and it's neutral, we say it's stable because it's a neutral charge. Like that's a good justification for it being stable. Yeah, nature doesn't like energy. charges, so right. nature does like neutral things. Right, cool. Cool. So this is the difference between the pH and the pKa. pKa refers to the acidity of a molecule, and pH refers to how many protons there are in a solution. But the relationship between these is, remember, when does a molecule tend to pick up protons when it's in a solution with a low pH. But how low is low enough? Well, we use the pKa as the benchmark. We use the pKa as the benchmark to tell what counts as a low pH for any particular functional group and what counts as a high pH. So what counts as a low pH for one functional group might be a high pH for another functional group. I think we're just doing the example of that right here, where if the, PK, if the pH here was five, that would count as a low pH relative to this pKa, which is why this is protonated, and would count as a high pH relative to this pKa, which is why this is deprotonated. You're pretty likely to see proline on the test, and most students, even if they've seen proline before, get this wrong because they don't practice it enough. Prote proline, drawing proline really feels weird, so you just have to, every day, take a blank piece of paper and draw proline to make sure you can actually draw what this structure looks like. Again, there's, how many carbons are there in the side chain? Three. It's a three carbon side chain. The only weird thing is this bond here. The only weird thing is that the last carbon in the side chain is attached to this nitrogen. Otherwise, it's just a normal three carbon side chain attached to the alpha carbon. Going down the list, we have serine. So what would the beta carbon be here? CH2. That would be the picture of the side chain for serine. Okay. Next one is threonine. So just to make sure, it's mm -hmm. two hydrogens off of carbon and then OH, right? That's right. Okay. The way I've drawn it on the board is the same as they have it in the table. Right. You're right. Yeah, it might no, be a little I bit clearer to put sure the hydrogen separate. That's the whole point. Yeah. Shall we go on to three name? Mm -hmm. So that would be SER, right? Oh, well, that's right there. Never mind. Just kidding. So which is the uh, which is the beta carbon in three name? CH. The CH. And then what's attached to the CH? A methyl and a hydroxy. Okay. And a hydrogen. Oh, you got That's it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Then there's tyrosine. That'll be a little more interesting. Shall we go into tyrosine? Yeah. That's the one I was asking you about when we started. Now, who's the beta carbon going to be here for tyrosine? Remember, this is a legal way to draw a benzene ring. So tyrosine has a benzene ring. All right, now let's suppose that we have a pH of one. Is this the correct form for this nitrogen? Oh, 
Well, yeah, so anyway, yeah. That's we have to look at the pKa's. So what's the pKa of this nitrogen? That's right, so that should be protonated. Anybody else we have to check? Yeah, the other two. Okay. P carbonyl. So what's the P A or what's the PKA for this carboxy group? Two point two. So they're lower. So is this the correct form? That's right. Now here's the first case that we've seen in a while where there's an acidic or basic side chain. Now we have an acidic or basic side chain. How can you tell from this table that it has an acidic or basic side chain? Well, notice how they now have this column, the pKa of the acidic function in the R. Mm -hmm. pKa of the acidic function in the R. And notice that all of the amino acids we've done up till here had dashes there. All the amino acids that we've done up to this point had a dash in that column. This is the first case where we had a number in the column for the pKa of the acidic function in the R. So that basically tells you whether you have a, any acid or base functions in the side chain, whether there's a dash or not in this column. We don't need to have that memorized. This, will this column tells us. So there's a number here. That gives us a pKa of 10.1. So is this the right form for the tyrosine? Yes. So I mean, in the ones before, there could be hydrogens on the side chains, but they're just not important to us. Because I mean, they're hydrogens off of all of these. That's true. Uh, obviously, any organic molecule has lots and lots of hydrogens. So these are just. What the question is, are there any acidic hydrogens? Okay, and the table just tells us. And the table are. will tell us whether there's any acidic hydrogens. Now, remember, most hydrogens are not acidic. Remember, an acidic hydrogen is a hydrogen that's easy to, to strip off. A proton that's easy to strip off. Well, usually it's not very easy to strip off a proton unless there's some way to stabilize the conjugate base. Oh, so. so it has resonance. So yeah, resonance is an excellent way to stabilize that conjugate base. That's right. So let's see, at this pH of 1, what would be the net charge on the tyrosine? Plus 1. Plus 1, that's right. Well, now let's try a pH of 9.5. Let's draw this amino acid at a pH of 9.5. Oh, you know, I'm sorry, we weren't ready for that yet. Let's actually do, sorry, but let's do a pH of 5 first. Let's start with a pH of 5 and draw what the functional groups would look like here. So for which functional groups is this a low pH? Well, this pH is lower than these two pKa's. So these two groups should be protonated. So this should still be NH3+, plus, and this should still be protonated. But compared to this pKa, this is a high pH. So now we should take off that proton over there. One second. This is for, this is for the pH of 5. Is it going to be protonated? This group over here? Oh, it's higher. It's higher than this pKa. So this looks like the approach here. And uh, what would be the net charge now? What about the side chain? Well, the side chain has a pKa of 10.1. Well, this pH is still low relative to 10.1, so the side chain should still be fully protonated. 
By the way, we, we should actually ask ourselves, well, yeah, so I'm sorry, so, uh, so that would give us this. Zero, right? And that would give us the net charge of zero. That's right. So in this case, we're getting the Zwitter ion. You can see again, the Zwitter ion does have two charges that are canceling each other out. Okay.